We've got three record stores today, right? Yeah. Yep. Noble yeah. Records. Uh, we got. I, I, I'm list? looking at today's trip as three record stores and some burn ends. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. You know, Lunchbox Records is the other one we're going to go to. I've heard good things about it. And then there's the other one. Look, we're going, to be, we're going to be lucky if I don't blow all my money in the first place that we're going to. You, you, know? you have a set budget, Larry? No, and that's, that's not good either. <laughs> yeah. And neither do I. That's not good either. Yeah. If, yeah, if yeah. I can come home today and not max out a credit card, yeah. that's my budget and I'll be happy. Well, I let's just hope it doesn't the, get the thing bad. it can't it really can't because <laughs> we got records for a day in a month you yeah. know and uh, I gotta I can't I can't risk record store day well you know five minutes dude five oh, minutes for five minutes five minutes all right so we're going to uh, we're going to see Noble Records we all know uh, Dylan from Noble Records great guy first time meeting him uh, we're gonna we're not gonna take the camera into the store. But we're gonna we'll give you a on our way back to uh, to the mid central um, North Carolina. We'll uh, give you a little update on our record store and our journey here today. But we're just gonna cut it off for the day. I, I think until uh, later. I, today. Yeah, I think that uh, my car uh -oh. will be a lot lighter on the way back <laughs> because my money that's in my pocket won't be there. I think it's going to be the other way around, Larry. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'll yeah. be carrying merchandise but not money. <laughs> yeah, $30 doesn't weigh much as compared this to, you know, true. 180 grams. This, this is, is true. true. All right, so we'll check it out. Yep. So we're going back home, uh, back to the Raleigh area. Um, a lot poorer. <laughs> a lot poorer. Yeah, I spent a lot more money. We got record store day too coming up, don't we, Larry? Oh God, yeah, yeah. Hey. Yeah, it's a it's a very expensive uh, habit. Is bankruptcy I mean, a good option after record store day for uh, your finances? Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Let me ask my CPA. Yeah. If I had one. But today was a good day. It we was. Uh, we hit the. We had Noble Records first thing. Dollar, there was our dollar bin day. We had dollar boxes all over the store. Uh, Larry went right for the boots. Right for uh, the boots. And that was another thing that was the highlight of the morning. Yeah. There was a little line when we first got there. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Um, but only about five, six deep. Yep. Um, I definitely picked up stuff that I normally would not have seen in, you know, years. So yeah, that's good. That's good. it was a good day. Yeah, you, Larry, you go for more of the uh, you go for the quality. Or I'm kind of going for the quantity and quality. Sure, sure. Um, but I would have to say that the best thing that I bought there, well, was something you suggested, and I've been looking for it forever. Is that first press spirit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 19 bucks, but it was pristine. Well, after I. I went through the boots and their Japanese pressings. I, first of all, I was listening to what they were playing when we walked in. Yeah. And it was Deep Purple, and it was uh, on the Burn Tour. And I noticed that, number one, the quality of the recording was good. It was good. It was decent for, for bootleg, right? Yeah. And uh, the performance, though, was really good. Ian Gian, the singer... His his vocal chops were in prime prime form, yeah. and I heard them. And now we're going to have Tommy Bolin play the song of when we were in Switzerland, "Smoke on the Water." And you know Tommy was playing uh, playing wonderful guitar. Yeah. And so I went immediately to the guy and I said, "What are you playing right now? Which boot?" And he showed me what he's playing. I said, "Did anybody buy this yet?" And he goes, "No." I said, "How much are you selling this for?" It was twenty nine bucks. Yeah, that's a steal. Twenty nine or thirty four. Yeah, and I heard and I said, it too, and I think it was fantastic. It's mine. It's mine. And he goes, no problem. He goes, is it okay with you if we keep playing it until <laughs> you leave? I'm like absolutely. Was that Dylan you talked to? Bald head? No, no, big no. Beard? no. It was. It, it was the so other guy. Yeah. Now the other guy, after I went and looked at all the rest of the boots, I brought like four of them up to him, and I said, do you have any idea the quality of these different boots? He goes, I have no idea. I'm like, oh. He goes, you need to talk to the other guy. And so, you know, I went up to the other guy and he goes, hey, look. He goes, listening station. The headphones aren't great, 
but at least it'll give you an idea of the quality of the, uh, the recording. Yeah. And this is not common for places that sell bootlegs. They don't normally let you listen to that stuff before you buy it because sometimes oh, the quality is not great and then they're not going to sell it ever. Right. So they want the money. They want the money and then they don't care. And not only did this guy let us let me listen to anything, anything in the store we could listen to before we bought, but they even said if, if anything's wrong with it, you know, you bring it back, we'll make it good. That's, I uh, did hear him say that. Yeah, that's good. That's and, good. And, you know, it probably even applies to the bootlegs, right? It's anything in the store. That's that's what he was implying with me, was the yeah. boots. Yeah, it's great. So, I got to tell you, that's uh, you can't I mean, ask for more than that. I tell you what, Noble Records on that on his YouTube channel, fantastic. Definitely watch it. Very I cool. love it. I uh, He goes through a lot of, of really rare, hard-to-find records. And the coolest thing is, is that about a year and a half ago there, he started his own uh, record label, Noble very, Records. Very neat. Yep, he even showed the pressing plant, took everybody through it, so I'll put a link in there. That's cool. To get to the Noble Records site. Wonderful store, great people in there. Yeah. Dylan is has a great sense of humor, he's funny. Um, we'll rate it here in a minute. I will say the other thing that I did buy was one of their releases, one of their record, one of their, uh, record releases. Did a thousand, you really? I did. Because I heard it playing during the auction, where I actually, you know, as he was playing those, you know, oh, some yeah, of his stuff in the background. You were in an experimental mood today. I was very much experimental time. Yeah, and I, and I did. I bought some weird stuff, and you know, I listened to a couple of them before I got nuts. Yep. But I'm all into the experimental. I mean, now I'll tell you one of the other boots I bought yep. was the Eagles Live, right? And I'll uh, tell you why this was interesting to me because I had bootlegs of the Eagles um, playing live. Um, with Joe Walsh, the Hotel California tour. Sure. Uh, I have the Eagles bootlegs from before Joe Walsh, when it was Bernie Leadon. I have all those things, right? This bootleg was the Eagles live with Joe Walsh, but before Hotel California came out. So this was, he had just joined the band. Right. They had not even done the album yet. That's why this was interesting. And he was already touring. So with Joe that. was playing all the old music, awesome. and uh, of course they 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 gave uh, him a couple solo tunes, "Turn to Stone." Uh, they gave him what's a great tune. Yeah. Um, but that's why this was interesting. That one to me. Well, how did that uh, one sound when you listened to it? It sounded, you know, once again for a bootleg, it sounded fine. Yeah. It sounded fine. It's listenable. It's totally listenable. Um, you know, is it a high fidelity? And no, no. But. Of course. It's listenable. It's absolutely listenable. I mean, you know, if you think about it, bootlegs back in the 70s, people sold them, and then they would hide yeah. them before the cops raided the place. Yeah. Bernie Leadon was a fine guitarist, but he's no Joe Walsh. Right. So it's neat to have this recording of the concert with Joe Walsh playing all that kind of um, the older music. It's very yeah, I mean, neat. Joe Walsh really brought a lot to that band. Sure did. Yeah. He brought a rock and, more rock and roll feel. He did. He did. Because they were going kind of in a... Kind of a folky, rocky, weird, very kind country of thing. rock, more yeah. on the country. Yeah, right. And that's what Bernie Leadon wanted. He wanted to stay country, and the band Glenn Fry and Dom Felder did not want to stay country. They wanted to go more rockish, and uh, that's why Bernie Leadon was taken out of the band. And Joe Walsh was introduced by the producer Bill Sismic, who represented the Eagles and Joe Walsh. And he's like, "Hey, this is this is these these, these guys." need each other. So, uh, the only other thing that I got there, Lair, was a whole bunch of dollar records. And uh, in a lot of cases, the covers were great, and I already had the albums that had sucky covers, but they were good. And some of the albums were good, and the covers sucked, but I have good covers and sucky albums. So, right. <laughs> I think I made out all right on that deal. Yeah, absolutely. All right, now, so... The other bootleg I got there... Oh, yeah. ...was David Bowie. Oh, that's and right. it yeah, was... I've got a nice picture on the cover. It, it did. Yeah. Um, the the one thing I'm curious, and I, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm I'm curious, obviously, who played guitar on that tour in this bootleg. Um, was it still Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, or is was he like one tour gone now? The uh, I'm trying to remember the name of this tour the, on the bootleg. I, I forget it off the top of my head, but. Um, when I get home and I'll start figuring it out, of course, you know, who, who played guitar on this. Now, uh, now, did Stevie Ray Vaughan actually tour with David Bowie? Yeah, yeah. But right after, on the one right after the uh, Modern Love uh, yeah. stuff, 
uh, that's when he asked David Bowie for a raise, um, and David Bowie said no, and so Stevie Ray said, well, I gotta go, I'm gonna go solo then. So that's when he left uh, David Bowie's band. Bowie went on tour, and I, I don't know if it was that exact moment, but uh, it left David Bowie, the suddenness of Stevie Ray leaving, in a lurch for a lead guitarist. Yeah. And he felt like he needed to get somebody with a name. And so he reached out to Peter Frampton, and Frampton was available. So Frampton played on the first tour with Bowie after Stevie Ray left. So I don't know if this was that tour or not. But I'll, So I'll, Modern I'll Love, when did that album come out, I wonder? Yeah, I'm not... It seems little, like it had been like the 80s. Yeah, it was the 80s, uh, early 80s. Yeah. yeah, and I can see where Peter Frampton would be available. I mean, started to kind of fall off around probably 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the long hair. It, he was like kind of, kind of like Samson, you know? Yeah. When he started losing his hair, people started uh, paying less attention. That's <laughs> so true. All right, so let's uh, let's grade Noble Records and Charlotte Watson Matthews. Charlotte, for the most part, um, used vinyl condition. Uh, One to ten. I'm going to say seven, and and the reason I say seven is because I saw some records that were in really good shape. Yeah. But I also saw some that were in really uh, questionable state. Um, but if you're careful about what you're selecting, maybe that goes to an eight because. You're not going to go through records and pick out some cr crappy condition records and right. buy them, right? You're going to pick out the, the good stuff, and we, we, I think we saw enough good stuff. We did. Yeah. I, I'll agree no, with I, you. I'll, I'll, give, gonna, I'll give it an eight. I'm going to take the eight, too. I mean, yeah. shit. I hate to keep talking about the Spirit album, but I have seen so many copies of that, somebody beat the living hell out of, that is the yeah. first time I've actually seen a copy that was that beautiful. It was an OG copy. So I'm eight, eight all the way. And then of course the dollar records, well they're dollar records. I mean in some cases it looked like we're dragged behind somebody's damn car. Right. <laughs> all right. Next one, uh, varied genres, varied. So what, did they have a pretty good selection of different uh, I, styles? I saw some metal there, Yeah. Spe special sections for metal, obviously for uh, rock. Um, uh, they had very little jazz. All right. Um, they had some, but it was very little. Um, but with rock and metal, uh, I think the selection was really good. Those, yeah. Or those yeah, rock and metal, but I mean, I, you're right. I don't think they crossed the boundary too much into jazz, which I enjoy. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, I'm not married to it, but I will tell you that um, there are some times I like a really good quality jazz record, and he didn't have much of that. No. Um, and, you know, look, I don't normally look at country or pop, too much. I didn't really see any sections there, so it didn't stick out to me. I'm going to give it a six. I, I, I'll various. give it a six point five. Now, <laughs> the reason I give it a six point five is I give him some props for having all those Japanese pressings there. Oh, Although they don't that. really, it's not technically genre, no, but, but it is it. an additional selection to peruse. Um, and I don't know if that was also just for today. And, and what he has is done. I, that yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and I, I think I think he got he along with from what I remember the boots. Along with the boots, he got, he got a bunch Japanese of Japanese presses, presses yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, which are you know in some cases more high fidelity, in some cases they're yeah. not. Yeah, just depends, yeah. right? A lot of those GBC pressings. Yeah. All right, uh, prices one to ten. Um, I gotta say. I, his prices were. I, I'm gonna say. They were fair. Yeah, I, I, I say. I'd say an eight. Yeah, um, I'm gonna actually I don't, seven. I, I don't feel like he was ripping anybody off. No. Um, for that wasn't sure. crazy. Um, he had some mobile fidelity. They they were not bargain priced. Right. Uh, so there was no attraction for me to make a, but are a they ever? trigger there. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. Depends. Mm -hmm. You know. Usually the bootlegs are they get priced uh, places that sell them. They're all the same price. It's very, you know, you know, and he didn't do that. And it showed a little more thought into what he was selling for each piece. And uh, I thought that was good. Now, did he have a few pieces like on the wall that were extravagantly priced? Yeah, but you know, what record shop doesn't, right? Well, yeah, you, you, you know, it's like, me, it was like they had like a top shelf liquor. Yeah, they, right? they you started off yeah. with well drinks <laughs> and then you had like your medium stuff. Your I can reach this, I can reach this level, <laughs> right? And that's 85 bucks. 
This level I can barely reach, the 125, and that level up there, I don't have arms long enough, <laughs> and they're 180 bucks. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, he had some he had some gems. He calls it his grail wall. Yeah. All good. All right, new selections. Well, one to one to ten. How, what was his? Uh, what did you think about the new selection? Well, I think when I think what I saw of his new selections, I look at the Japanese pressings, yeah. uh, and you know, if this was the only time he got those Japanese pressings, and that's it. I'd say his new stuff was probably not his strong point yeah, of the store. It's mostly used. Yeah. Good use. Yeah. Uh, the boots, of course. And yeah. Like you said, I think it was a special having the boots plus the ear. Yeah. Right. Absolutely right. So I, I don't know. I'd say a six. Uh, friendliness and knowledgeable. Well, friendliness, uh, you know. Ten. Ten. Yeah. Uh, knowledgeable. Right. Ten. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they were all good. And, you know, look, I, I'm a little biased, too, because I watch his channel, and he's definitely... Certainly knowledgeable. Yes. Um, organiz store organization. I thought that was fine. Um, you know, when when we walked in, I didn't even I didn't, I wasn't even in there for five seconds, and and somebody I don't know if it was him or his guy was saying the boots are here, the Japanese pressings are right here, and I'm like, well, thank you. That you know, That's otherwise there's band biscuits all bins all over the place yeah i didn't know where to go i didn't either. uh and he he showed me where to go right away so that was good yeah i'm gonna say i'm gonna say as far as organization you know the alphabetized did it have all the tabs and all that i'm gonna give it a six yeah i mean i'd say he's, he had some good stuff in this place and they were all in areas yep but if you wanted to get right to say you know a rush record or what it, it would yeah, you'd have to do a little digging. Yes, yeah, you could, too. and you could. You might have to go to a couple different places. Yeah, here's the new albums, here's used albums, and here's Japanese, you know, uh, pressings, and and here's imp you know. So yeah. you could have to go to four different places uh, looking for a rush release. No, I totally agree. Potentially, you know. Uh, and then, um, all right, we kind of covered this a little bit. Last two, hi-fi selections, high fidelity, you know, mobile fidelity, anything. 180 gram, audio file quality stuff. Yep. One to ten, what do you think? Uh, I'll give it a, and once again, I think whatever I give is skewed because today was a special day for them. Yeah. And it's the only time I've been in the store. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give it a seven and a half. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll, you know, did he have some mobile fidelities? Yes, he did. Did he have a lot of Japanese pressings? Yes, he did. So today was a good day to visit his store with high fidelity on your mind. Now, is it going to be a good place to look for high fidelity stuff in a month? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know either. And I'm going to probably go with a six on that. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Uh, and then the last one is atmosphere. The tunes play. I think we've already know your answer. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I like that because, you know, I love when I go into a record store yeah. and whatever they're playing tickles my fancy that I need to buy whatever I just listened to. Sure. So I got to give it a nine for that. Well, yeah. and the best part, I think, Blair, is the fact that he um, he was playing his bootlegs. Right? He, was, he yeah. wasn't playing some right. off shit. He was playing the flavor of the day. Yeah. Which was the bootlegs. Yeah. So, yeah, overall, yeah. I think, you know, I, I'm averaging it out, I would say the store gets a good solid eight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So that was Noble Records in Matthews, North Carolina. Uh